comfort me a while by letting me know that you would seek me just to dwell in my presence. That's a phrase right out of the book, God Calling, the very dangerous book that inspired Sarah Young to write Jesus Calling. We're going to be talking about the dangerous book that inspired Jesus Calling on this episode. You're going to want to keep watching. Jesus Calling was not written in a vacuum. Sarah Young didn't decide one day to uh, say, you know, I'm going to sit down with my pen and my paper and I'm just going to see what God says to me and I'm going to write it down and I'm going to write a book. And that's not what happened. Sarah Young was inspired to write Jesus Calling by a very dangerous book named God Calling. Now, if you have never heard of God Calling, God Calling is a book that was written by two anonymous women. They just called themselves the two listeners. It was written in 1935. Sarah Young got a copy of this book and she read it and she said, hmm, I wonder if God can speak to me the same way. And so because of her reading that book, which, by the way, is a New Age Gnostic book, the book is actually in the Encyclopedia of New Age Beliefs. So this is a very dangerous book. Now, remember, as we go through this and we talk about this book, this is the book that inspired Sarah Young. Keep that in mind. We're not going to be looking much at Jesus Calling. However, we're going to look at the uh, introduction to Jesus Calling because you're going to find something very interesting there. All right. But first, I'm over at CBN and in a very old article that I didn't even think would still be on the web, but it is. It's over at CBN.com's uh, slash book slash Q dash Sarah Young if you are wanting to see that for yourself, or you can just do what I did. I just type in Sarah Young CBN interview and it was the first thing that came up. But I read this several years ago, so I, I had no idea it would still be on the web. I was hoping it would be, and it was. And I want to read a section of this interview, a very small section here, that talks about Sarah Young being inspired by the book God Calling. Look at what it says here. How did you learn to dialogue with God? My journey, with, my journey began with a devotional book, God Calling. So there it is right there. It began with God Calling, written in the 1930s by two women who practiced waiting in God's presence. Now look at this. Writing the messages they received as they listened. Now, while this is not automatic writing, uh, that you find in occult practices, it's pretty similar. All right. About a year later, or, or I'm sorry, about a year after I started reading this book, I began to wonder if I too could receive messages during my times of communing with God. I had been writing in prayer journals for years, but this was one way communication monologue. Now watch this. I knew that God communicates through the Bible, and then she puts in parentheses here, and I treasure his word. Well, I wonder if she really does, because look at what she says next. But I wondered what he might say to me personally on a given day. So I decided to listen to God with pen in hand, writing down whatever I sensed he was saying. So see, the Bible was not good enough for Sarah Young. She wanted more. She wanted to experience something more. It was a pleasure and a privilege to be able to set aside large blocks of time for focusing on Jesus and His Word. It's so comforting to have God's Word in my heart all the time, guiding and encouraging me day and night. 
Because I revere the Bible, I always endeavor to make my writings consistent with biblical truth. Dear reader, as you make your way through the pages of this book, I long for you to embrace the joy of a close relationship with Jesus. He is with you at all times, and in His presence there is fullness of joy. Of course, I wasn't listening for an audible voice. I was seeking the still, small voice of God in my mind, heart. Now, that term, still, small voice, the Gnostics also use that term. There is a uh, author, a Gnostic author, that was a uh, writer of many Gnostic books in the 1950s by the name of Samuel Aon Vayar. And Vayar wrote a little book called The Yellow Book. And The Yellow Book was all about Kundalini. In that book, he calls Kundalini, uh, or one of the names, I should say, that is, is used for Kundalini is the Holy Spirit. All right? So Kundalini is also connected with fire. And that should scare you, especially if you are a Bethel follower. You hear uh, fire mentioned in the NAR and other charismatic uh, churches all the time. This is Kundalini. And, um, you know, Samuel Aon VR uh, writes about uh, in that book, the yellow book that is about Kundalini, about the still small voice. Listening for that still small voice. So the Gnostics do the same thing. Very, very uh, dangerous stuff there. So that is the CBN interview where she mentions in that interview the book that inspired her, which was God Calling. Now, here's something interesting that you may not know. In the original version of Jesus Calling, in the introduction to the original version, or the earlier versions, I should say, not the original, the earlier versions of Jesus Calling, Sarah Young says practically the same thing. As a matter of fact, I'm betting, I'm almost positive, that uh, this paragraph we read on CBN is taken right out of the introduction to the earlier version of the book. In the earlier version of Jesus Calling, she makes no bones about it, just as she did here, that God Calling is the book that inspired her. Okay? She got a lot of heat from that. And so guess what happened? In the later versions, it's not there. God calling is not mentioned one time. As a matter of fact, in the later versions of the book, especially, you know, if you do a, if you buy it on Kindle, and I have the Kindle version, you, you buy it on Kindle, or even if you have the PDF version, you go in a search box and put God calling, you won't find anything anything about God calling because she took a lot of heat for, uh, you know, saying that that was the book that inspired her. I doubt very seriously that she did any kind of research on that book whatsoever. Otherwise she would have never put that. That was this great book that inspired her to write Jesus calling in the first place. So it is not in the earlier uh, or the later versions, but it is in the earlier versions and I have a PDF copy here in front of me. Let me give you some uh, background before we look at the introduction. As you read the introduction, she's going to talk about uh, working with um, uh, uh, satanic abuse victims, and I believe in Australia. And because of the spiritual warfare there, she began to pray. And so she prayed for God's protection over her family. And as she was praying, she said she was visualizing. And while she was visualizing, it seems to me that she was saying she was having a vision, and in that vision, she was enveloped by light. That, that in and of itself should scare you. That should scare you. But uh, she says that. That's the context. So as we, as we look at this in its context, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, we'll read the introduction here where she mentions God's calling. Only two or three days later, a counseling client who was an incest survivor began remembering experiences of satanic ritual abuse. This form of Satan worship involves subjecting victims who are often young children to incredibly evil, degrading tortures. 
My courageous client and I walked together into the darkness of her memories, but God had prepared me for sleep, for stepping into deep darkness by first bathing me in his glorious light. And I realized that experiences of God's presence, so this wasn't just visualization here, she believed this actually happened, experiences of God's presence were not only for my benefit, but were also preparation for helping others. During that same year, 1992, I began reading God Calling, a devotional book written by two anonymous listeners. These women practiced waiting, practiced waiting quietly in God's presence, pencils and paper in hand, recording the messages they received from him. The messages are written in the first person with I designating uh, God. While I was living in Japan, someone had mailed this book to me from the U.S. I had not read it at that time, but I had held on to the book through two international moves. Six or seven years later, this little paperback, look at this, became a treasure to me. It dovetailed remarkably well with my longing to live in Jesus' presence. So now let's run over and look at the actual introduction to uh, the the later version of the book, Jesus Calling, and and look at this. Um, So we're going to start in the same place in the Kindle version here, the later version, that we did in the earlier version that I have, which is a PDF version. So right up here, she says, only two or three days later, a counseling client who was an incest uh, survivor, began remembering experiences of satanic ritual abuse. So you see, uh, that is uh, where uh, we we started reading. And then down here, this last uh, sentence here, I realized that experiences of God's presence were not only for my benefit, but were also preparation for helping others. Now look, my journaling had changed from monologue to dialogue right after all of this right here in orange is speaking of God calling. And even this paragraph after it's the same exact paragraph. uh, It's the same exact paragraph that was in the CBN interview. But look here over here at the Kindle version, it's missing because she took a lot of heat for it and she uh, got rid of it. It's no longer mentioned by her at all. But it really is uh, the book that inspired her to write Jesus Calling. Now, remember, Gnosticism is synchronistic. Okay, it takes from all kinds of religious systems. And one of the religious systems that it takes from is New Age. Now, In his fantastic book, Gnostic America, and by the way, if you don't have this book, you should get this book. This is a great book. Gnostic America. Peter Burfine said this. One can discern echoes of the new age with all its finding God within hopes. And the parallels are there. New Ager Marilyn Ferguson heralded the coming new emergent spiritual tradition in America, describing the paradigm shift of in spirituality thus. Adherents prefer direct experience, the excursion to an inner world whose vision then infuses all of life to any form of organized religion. So Burfind recognizes the influence that New Age has had on Gnosticism. Now, there's another book that I want to talk about for a moment. This is a book that Steve Kozar sent me. Steve Kozar over at the Messed Up Church uh, YouTube channel and uh, blog. He sent me uh, a book by Warren B. Smith called uh, Another Jesus Calling. And in this book, uh, as a matter of fact, it's, uh, let me see here, I think it's, yeah, it's chapter two. Chapter two is called uh, Permeated with New Age Terminology. And this is speaking about the book God Calling. Okay, that, that's what chapter two, from chapter two to about, I don't know, five or six chapters later, it's, it's all speaking about God Calling. And in this chapter, he mentions a bunch of New Age terms. All right. 
And what I did is I took some of those terms and went on to the Gnostic Teachings website, and I put uh, those terms in the search box and uh, uh, selected the exact phrase, and a lot of those terms showed up. Uh, so we're going to look at some of those terms. Now remember, again, as we look at these terms, this comes straight out of God calling. And that's very important because Jesus Calling was inspired by a New Age book. Remember, I said it was in the Encyclopedia of New Age Beliefs. So the first term we're going to look at is the universal spirit. All right, the universal spirit. So you can come over here and you can see that right here. I've put it in the search box. You can go down here and look. OK, uh, look at all of the times that universal spirit is mentioned. Sometimes it's capitalized. Other times it is not. But it's 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 there. So you can see that uh, there for yourself. This is in God calling. God calling is structured the same exact way that Jesus calling is structured. It is a devotional book. All right. You, it is meant to be read uh, daily. All right. It's 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 supposed to be part of your daily reading. All right. Daily devotional, if that's what you want to call it. Do not be too ready to do. Just be. Do not be too ready to do. Just be. I said, be ye therefore perfect, not do perfect things. Try and grasp this. Individual efforts avail nothing. It is only the work of the universal spirit, my spirit, that counts. So the next phrase is spiritual level. All right. And this is from May the 14th. All right. This is really freaky. You have got to hear this. I'm going to read it in its context. OK, now this is a long passage, but I'm not going to read the entire thing. Just two small paragraphs. But it yeah, you're going to hear some new age stuff here. In each of you too, remember, there is God. Hmm? In each of you too, remember, there is God. It is always given to man to see in his fellow man those aspirations and qualities he himself possesses. So only I, being really God, can recognize the God in man. Hmm? <laughs> remember, remember this, too, in your relation to others. Your motives and aspirations can only be understood by those who have attained the same spiritual level. That is a Gnostic term. So the next term we're going to look at is divine forces. All right. And you can see that over here as well over at Gnostic Teachings. So this is from February the 18th. This is what it says. You think that there is much to do in a crisis like this. There is only one thing to do. Link your lives onto the divine forces, and then it is as much my work to see those lives and their affairs run in an orderly right manner as to see that tomorrow's sun rises. All right, so the next term is great divine heart. All right. Great divine heart. This is from February the 6th in God calling. Comfort me a while, God says, a while by letting me know that you would seek me just to dwell in my presence, to be near me, not even for teaching, not for material gain, not even for a message, but for me. The longing of the human heart to be loved for itself is something caught from the great divine heart. All right. Now we move on to the path of initiation. Now, the path of the initiation is an entire series over at Gnostic Teachings. Uh, there's a whole podcast um, lecture series on the path of initiation, entering into uh, Gnosticism. So this is from God Calling August the 3rd. See me in all, and then it will be an easy task. This is the priceless time of initiation. 
But remember that the path of initiation is not for all, but only for those who have felt the sorrow cry of the world that needs a Savior and the tender plea of a Savior who needs followers through whom he can accomplish his great work of salvation uh, jo- salvation joyfully. So the Savior needs us. He needs us as much as we need him. God begs us to be into his, to be in his presence. The Savior needs followers. Now, I don't know about you, but the God that I read in Scripture is a sovereign God, and he needs nothing, <laughs> absolutely nothing from you or I. So you know for a fact that the God of God calling is not the God of Scripture. It is another God. Just like the Jesus in Jesus Calling is not the Jesus of Scripture, it is another Jesus. The book God Calling is the dangerous book that inspired Sarah Young to write Jesus Calling.